Hello, I'm Wilhelmina Ranke. I'm the Head of Library Systems and Technologies at Georgia Southern University. Today I'm talking about tensions between privacy versus fundamental needs of open educational resources. First off, why should we care? Both libraries and the open educational community have reasons to value privacy. For the library community, privacy is a long-standing value. And libraries are often deeply involved in OER. The library tends to be somewhere where all academic disciplines are using resources. Libraries tend to spend money on material to where when open resources get adopted, libraries get a cost savings. So libraries have an economic interest in there being open research and educational materials to save money on acquisitions. And libraries tend to run publishing programs to where they're able to assist with publishing and sharing out open educational resources once those have been created. Privacy is a long-standing value for libraries. It's written into the Library Bill of Rights promoted by the American Library Association. I put the quote there on the slide, all people, regardless of origin, age, background, or views, possess a right to privacy and confidentiality in their library use. Libraries should advocate for, educate about, and protect people's privacy. Then, for the OER community, privacy is not as clearly stated value, but open educational resources has a social justice aspect to it. Open educational resources are fundamentally about social justice issues like better access to information, having someone be able to study without the cost of materials being a barrier, and about promoting equality. And OER is kind of sort of based in technology, Definitely the potential for technology to get rid of printing costs and to decouple the content from the physical media that that content is printed on is part of the potential of OER. Remixing, sharing, making copies, that's all easier with digital. Some of the issues with privacy in our society today are also much easier or newly possible in digital or they're because of things that are much easier or are newly possible in a digital environment. Which brings me to the freemium business model. A common business model in technology is to provide a set of services for free or for a discount in exchange for personal data. That's now starting to be written into law that charging more for privacy is protected and not a consumer protection issue. That's bad for equality and equity. When demographics with more money can buy privacy and people with money can buy that privilege, then privacy will be less important to protect for to protect for everyone, because people with the most power will be able to buy their way out of regular people problems. Providing a baseline level of privacy promotes freedom for everyone. The first fundamental tension between privacy and OER comes from the need to show the value of OER. Making the open educational resources, creating them, sharing them out, maintaining them over time, and hosting a publishing platform for them all costs money. There's always going to be pressure to justify that expenditure, and probably that is going to be done by showing usage statistics. We want to know and we want to be able to show who is using the OER, how much usage specific pieces of content are getting, and generally to be able to show the value through use. Anyone comparing different publishing platforms is probably going to look at usage statistics as something to use as part of that comparison. Anyone putting out an RFP for a publishing platform is probably going to have a section on statistics. Basically, the advocates who are publishing open educational resources will demand that statistics be built into tools for sharing out open educational resources. And part of getting that statistics is that anyone who is using the open educational resources, looking at the site, looking at those resources, some information about what they're doing and how they're using that material is being collected. So a little bit of their privacy is being taken away, and that's at the request of advocates who are publishing open educational resources. So I put here a screenshot of statistics in Pressbooks. Pressbooks has built-in statistics, as do many publishing platforms. Put here a screenshot of statistics in Google Analytics. Google Analytics is something we all love to use because we can implement it with so many other tools that we have and use it to measure traffic on all kinds of publishing platforms. And I put here a screenshot of statistics in Canvas. So if you're sharing out resources with something like Canvas Commons, there are also statistics available there.
the next fundamental tension that I want to talk about is that there's a demand for an open educational resources platform to be able to share grades, progress, and completion information with learning management systems. Interoperability and dropping grades into an LMS is something that teachers want. When I was working more directly with OER and with digital publishing in Florida, a conversation that would happen with faculty would go something like this. I would say, you can upload OER to the repository. And faculty would want quizzes that put the grades in the learning management system, and they want all kinds of interactive content and interoperability. And I would be like, you can upload a PDF. And that would not necessarily go over so well. Um, good open educational resources done right will also be easy to implement. Dropping grades in the learning management system makes it easy for teachers and faculty to grab something and be able to integrate it right in, and it really helps adoption. And as it turns out, we have the SCORM framework for being able to pass off the completion and grade information to a learning management system and pass off information about progress through learning resource, grade information for learning resource, and completion information. In Open Educational Resources, we have our five R's. Those are about open aspects, but stepping back and looking at what makes a good learning resource period, whether that's open, licensed, or proprietary, making it easy for teachers to grab it, use it, and get the progress and completion information automatically into their course, that's what's driving adoption. That makes it easy for people. It's not unique to open. This is about sharing information to the LMS applies to all the learning resources. And in order to compete, open educational resources should be doing that. For any learning resource, the easier it is for teachers and the more value it brings, the more likely teachers are gonna be to use it. Interoperability and sharing grades is a killer app feature that teachers want. There is a standard for that, SCORM, the Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It's been around since 2000 and it's built into all the major learning management system platforms. It's also built into many publishing platforms that are specific to education or to open edu education. And at the core of that SCORM framework, it's passing information about an individual student or a learner's progress through a resource. Tracking, knowing who that student is, getting that information, and then sharing that information out, it's a killer feature driving OER adoption for busy teachers. I hope that this got people thinking more about the issues. These fundamental needs of OER, needing statistics to show the value, and a desire for the, or needing that ability to share out completion information to a learning management system, those are pretty fundamental to the survival and adoption of an OER program. My hope is that being more aware of the tension between privacy and social justice issues versus these fundamental needs of open educational resources will get people thinking about how to act more ethically along the way. So to think about what's the minimum amount of personal information that I need, uh, where that information is going, especially when it's going off to huge data brokers like with Google Analytics, or even many of the vendors for higher education and education in general are large data brokers. Um, and that thinking about this will help people to think about how to proceed more ethically along the way. And especially think about what's a baseline level of privacy that we want to ensure for everyone using OER. Often thinking about something and going in with an awareness can bring up questions that lead to small changes with a big impact. 